Hi everybody, my name is Walter Hugo Lopes Pinaya. I am postdoc at King's College London, and it is a great pleasure for me to present our work on unsupervised brain anomaly detection and segmentation with transformers. So let's get started. In these last years, transformers have revolutionized the field of natural language processing, where they become the de facto network architecture for most language tasks. A great part of their success relies on attention mechanisms, where they are used to capture the sequential nature of an input sequence, dispensing with recurrence and convolution entirely. These attention mechanisms allow the modeling of the dependencies of the inputs without regarding to their distance. This way, enabling the learning of complex long-range relationships. Due to its promising results on natural language processing, other research areas have recently explored their use. In particular, the application of transformers on computer vision has shown the incredible results in several tasks, like image classification, object detection, and their application as genetic models for image synthesis. The performance of transformer as generative models and its power to model long-range relationship make them a great candidate for one of the most challenging tasks in the image, the anomaly detection. Anomaly detection and segmentation support an array of different clinical tasks, like diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment choice. However, the fine characterization of these lesions requires a accurate segmentation that is generally dependent on human expertise, making them expensive and time-consuming to obtain and greatly limiting the clinical application. For this reason, several researchers have focused on developing automatic tools using machine learning. And to overcome the necessity of expensive labeled data, unsupervised methods have emerged as promising tools to find arbitrary pathologies. These unsupervised methods have relied mainly on deep generative models of normal data, where they learn the probability density estimate of the input data. In this case, anomalies are registered as deviation from normality. The current state of the art is held by the variation encoded based methods where these methods try to reconstruct the input data based on what they learned from the training dataset with normal data. Then, it is used the reconstruction error to quantify the degree and the spatial distribution of any anomaly. Even with good results, the success of this method is still limited by the quality of its reconstructions. In an effort to improve the unsupervised methods, we propose an approach where we learn the distribution of the brain image data with an ensemble of transformers. In this study, we create and evaluate a robust method and compare its performance on synthetic and real datasets in a series of experiments. In the first experiment, we use a head CT class from the MEDNIS dataset, and we introduce synthetic anomalies in the testset. When using the variation encoded based approach, we can verify in the reconstructed error maps that the method can decently highlight the synthetic anomalies in some images. However, it's possible to notice that the areas in the image with fine details contain high values of residuals, which could be interpreted as false positives. The model highlighted this area due to its limited reconstruction capacity. In the proposed method, we combine the vector quantized variation decoder with an autoregressive transformer. In specific, we are using a decoder-only part of the linear transformer called performer. After training the models 
on normal data. In our segmentation method, first we use the encoder of the VKVAE to create a discrete latent representation of the image. This 2D representation is then transformed into a 1D sequence using an arbitrary ordering. In this stead, we focus on the raster ordering. Then, the 1D sequence is inputted into the autoregressive transformer. Due to its autoregressive nature, the transformer makes predictions based on the past values from the input sequence. This way, for each position of the input sequence, the transformer will output the probabilities of the following value. Using a threshold, we can highlight the elements from the sequence that have a lower probability of occurring in a normal dataset, according to the transformer. Then, we can create a resample mask, indicate which element in the sequence should be corrected. By using the transformer to resample these elements, we create a heal sequence. Finally, the sequence is reshaped to 2D and processed by the decoder of the VKVE to reconstruct the brain image. Using only the VKVE, we can see that the model by itself does not perform very well. But with the transformer helping to model the latent representation of the training dataset, our segmentation performance was better than the variation of the encoded method. However, from the residual maps, we can observe that we still have many wrong areas showing high residuals, creating false positives. To try to attenuate the impact of these regions, we explore the spatial information that the transformer gives to us. Using the resample mask, we can filter the residual maps, leaving only the regions where the transformer previously indicated a low probability of belonging to the normal distribution. Now, we can verify that this step eliminates many false positives that were generated by the VKVAE limited reconstruction ability, and it improves the segmentation performance score. Next, to increase the robustness of our method, we also use an ensemble of transform. However, for each transformer, we use a different way to reorder our 2D latent representation into a sequence. Since our autoregressive models relies on the previous elements to predict the value of the next element, by having different ways to sort the 1D sequence, we compel each one of the transformers to use a different context of the input image when predicting the likelihoods. With the ensemble of transformer, we improve the performance of our method by a large margin, obtaining a best achievable dice score of almost 0.9. In the second experiment, we verify our method's performance in anomaly detection image-wise. In this case, we measure the log likelihood values that the transformer assigned to the in-distribution images and compare them against the log likelihood of images with synthetic anomalies. Here we call them as near out distribution images and against the log likelihood of images from different categories of the Madness dataset. Here we call them far out, out of distribution images. From the graph, we can observe that images from different categories have a lower likelihood than the in-distribution data. The near out of distribution images presented uh, intermediary values as expected. Finally, we measure the performance of our method on real image data. In this case, we are training our models on 60,000 images from 15,000 different subjects from the UK Biobank. In this experiment, we use the flare images where each slice has 224 by 224 pixels. 
to evaluate the performance of our, our methods, we test them in four different datasets with subjects with multiple sclerosis lesions, white matter hyperintensities, and tumors. By analyzing the residual images, we can see again that our method has a better segmentation performance, especially in reducing the number of false positive anomalies. By verifying the quantitative results, we can see that our method has a higher best at evil dice score and area under the precision recall curve compared to the other autoencoded based methods in all datasets. In conclusion, we know that the automatic delineation of lesions is essential to introducing complex rich neuroimaging features in clinical care. In our series of experiments, we verified that the, our novel transformer-based approach achieves superior results in all tested tasks when compared to the competing methods. As future studies, we plan to extend our analysis to 3D data, to use other variables for conditioning our models, for example, the subject age, and explore the performance of our method in different modalities and other medical data. If you have any questions or suggestions, please just send me an email or reach me out at Twitter or access our page at amigos.ai. Thanks for watching.